open three-pointer. And it's picked up. He's on the run, and he dunks it. A huge dunk. Wow. It's time for exciting high school basketball on WDUX. Brought to you by your WDUX high school sports booster. Proudly back in the Amherst Falcons on WDOX are Amherst Family Foods, High Smith Accounting, Ministry Healthcare, Younger's Holly Funeral Home, Shoemaker Electric, Heating and Cooling, International Bank of Amherst, H.O. Wolding, Paper Implement, and Amherst Telephone Company. Proudly back in the Wyoming and Fremont Indians on WDOX are Hades IGA, Bay Lake Bank, Bay Wilson of Remax, Shambo and Lions, Neville Motors GM, Farmer State Bank, County Post West, Fire on Ice, Fine Hanson Delkey Funeral Home, First National Bank, and Agro Pure. Now let's head out to the game for a preview and the call of tonight's action on WDUX. Good evening and welcome from Hawaii, a league of Fremont High School. It's the season, the finale of the regular season. It's the 15 and 6 Wyoiga Fremont Lady Indians. Hosting the 16 and 5 Lady Falcons from Amherst. There's a conference title on the line for tonight. We'll tell you more about that. John Wright and John Hammond courtside when we come back right after this two minute timeout. First National Bank has assembled a team of professionals to serve your financial needs. A team that can serve you with locations in Wapaka, Wyoiga, Iola, Clintonville, Marion, Seymour, and Chiocton. First National is ready to help with your money matters, from checking and savings to IRA accounts to loans for any worthwhile purpose. They'll find First National Bank to be team players, serving you with seven locations throughout Mid-Wisconsin. Member FDIC, from their team to yours, good luck Indians. Younger's Holly Funeral Home wishes the Amherst Falcons the best of luck. By giving a commitment to hard work and the dedication to doing your best, good results can only happen. The Hardell Holly, Holly, and Younger's Holly Funeral Homes, serving the Amherst, Almond, Wapaka, and Wild Rose areas, realize the importance of supporting our youth in Amherst and the surrounding communities by providing them encouragement in all their extracurricular activities and scholastic studies. County Post West covers the Wyoming and Fremont areas like no other media. From decisions at City Hall, to a recap of the game, to community events. Only in the pages of the County Post West can you read complete coverage of your hometown news and sports. With pictures and stories of interest to you in the Wyoming and Fremont areas. Pick up a copy at local newsstands and counters throughout the area, or have it delivered weekly to your mailbox. County Post West, a publication of Journal Community Publishing Group. By Smith Accounting Tax Group offers great quality and service in our Amherst and Plover offices. Our trained professionals can assist with all your business needs, including QuickBooks Consulting, Payroll Processing, Bookkeeping, and Tax Preparation. We help you understand your business and individual tax returns so you can minimize your tax burden. Please call Clysmith Accounting Tax Group at 824-6767 or visit our website at clysmithcpas.com. I'm Randy, more than your accountant, your personal business advisor. Back courtside, we at Fremont High School, John Wright, John Hammond with the season finale of the Central Wisconsin 8 Girls season. And as we take a look at the hometown Wyoiga Fremont Indians, they come in 9-4 and four in the conference. And for a team that is right in the midway point of the conference, they really do have more of a feel of a, uh, of a quality team than you would imagine, John. And uh, right now, John is being greeted by, uh, we'll give a shout-out to Bud and his wife. A couple of celebrities here in Wyoming. But as I was saying, the Wyoming Fremont Indian girls team, although 9-4 and four in the conference, midway down in that level, if you were to look at records, they are a team that can really wear more of a face of a really powerhouse team. They've got a load of talent. They can play defensively. And as recently we've seen against uh, Manawa, a lesser opponent, though, they can get into a tough up-and-down game and play just about any kind of pace game you can for what yeah, they're, they're similar. These two teams are similar statistically, but they go about it different ways. Uh, Am- Amherst really puts the pressure on you, and they try to turn you over a lot. And uh, they are a good rebounding team, and they rebound with, they have a lot of size. Not necessarily height, but they've got the bulk, and they know how to use their bodies to get great positions. Whereas on the other side of the ledger, Wyoming Fremont is a little bit more athletic, 
with their rebounding skills. They rely a little bit more on two players. Now, Jamie Pitt is a big-time scorer for Amherst, but after that, it's really spread out over about seven other players, and it's very balanced. And they all can do the similar, the similar type things. They play defense and they rebound. Uh, uh, but uh, it should be a really good close game. I, I think they're similar teams, but they just go about it different ways. In fact, for Wyoming and Fremont Indians, they will play a legitimate six or seven players that can really be interchanged in and out of their starting lineup. Whereas you take a look at an Amherst Falcon team, as you said, John, they feature a different leading scorer just about every game over the last five or six games. In fact, these are two different rutses that have led the way in scoring. Along with Grayway, she has an 18-point performance recently for the Amherst Falcons. So when you put a Jamie Pitt uh, against the wall with maybe double coverage or pitching her down, she can give it to other players, and at least two or three other Amherst Falcons have had to step forward to get those close to 20-point performances. They're more of a position type team. Like I said, they've got some, they've got some bulk in there, and they're really good at using it. And they have really good play off the bench with Jeff Story, very intelligent player. And again, she can score. She gives a scoring punch off the bench. And uh, whereas uh, the two starters, Holbert uh, and uh, Helwig for Why We are more athletic, and they kind of carry the scoring load between the two of them. But they can they'll use their quickness. Hand side, whereas Amherst and more use their bulk. Now, will the quickness win out, or will the bulk and and you know it will you can't get in foul trouble? Uh, Why we get Freeman is a little bit more dependent on you know, those two girls. So if either one of them were to get in foul trouble, it could cause real problems for Why we get Freeman. Whereas uh, Amherst is much deeper and their uh, talent is more spread around. Although, John, i got to tell you, I'm going to get yourself familiarized with Why we get Freeman as we take a look at the other end of the floor, Jenny Helwig who is their taller player, she is not just height, in fact, six foot tall underneath as, what, a junior, but she can show that she can dribble and she can shoot with both hands, and not only can she get it from right underneath the bucket and get herself in good position, she's got a circle, a, a shooting circle of 12 to 15 feet, really, so she is a much more dynamic player, and not only that, she can't key in on her. They have outstanding guard play, does this why we can free my team. So as we've drawn it up, you get an A game for Wiley and Fremont tonight, and maybe even an A minus or B plus game for Amherst. This could be a close one tonight. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they're more, they're a little bit more athletic. The bigger girls can step outside and do things, and and maybe put it on the floor and create some uh, a lot of foul shot opportunities for themselves. It's going to be really interesting to see how this does play out. And that's why we love playing these games. And a little bit of looking ahead here, if you will, as far as the overall scheme of things, the Amherst Lady Falcons are leading the conference coming into tonight at 12-1, and one, just one game ahead of wittenberg Burnwood. In fact, Whitburn is playing host to Manawa tonight, so not a heavy concept there. So really, for all purposes, if Amherst wants to have their name on that conference trophy by themselves, not only do they have to face a stronger opponent in Wyweka Fremont, but Coach Jay Pitt has said in his three years, he's had a tough time winning here, and a lot of it has to do with not just the atmosphere, but as you said, the athletes that he's playing against tonight. Yeah, it should be a real good game, and uh, both teams are going to kind of want to get off to a good start. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're a wide week of Fremont, a couple of things you want to do, you don't want Jamie Pitt to go off on you, you know, and get, you know, a 30-point game or something like that. You've got to contain Jamie Pitt. And then the other thing is handle the pressure. Handle the Amherst press. You know, just be patient, get through it, and uh, don't try to force things. And, and if you do those things, you got a good chance of winning. And again, if you're Amherst, you got to contain their two big players. And uh, I, I think that the, it, this game could come down to foul trouble and free throw shooting. Neither team shoots free throws very well. They're in the mid-50s. But foul trouble could play a big part in this game. I've seen Jimmy Pitt uh, get in a situation where she's thrown the fouls herself. Right. So if any one of the big stars gets in foul trouble, especially why we get Fremont, I think if either one of their big uh, players gets in foul trouble, it could spell disaster for them. But uh, the Amherst is just a little deeper, I think. And as we take a look at the Division Three bracket, why we get Fremont, by virtue of their student body, has to play in Division Three, and they will be uh, hosting Winnicott next Tuesday night. So we will have that sub-regional uh, matchup for you on the FM station next Tuesday night. 
And as we take a look at Amherst, they're going to have a bye in a Division Four. They're going to wait the winner of Marathon and Three Lakes. And so then they're set to play next Friday night in the regional semifinal. And interestingly enough, it's them and 17-0 and Wild Rose that are in the same sectional. We're getting ahead of ourselves, but we're going to keep an eye on that sectional, which also includes Rochelle and Tri-County in girls basketball. So uh, it's bracket watching time, but plenty of business to be done here before all that. But, you know, the advantage Amherst has to be when it gets to tournament time, because they've been down this road many, many times before, really, that's what they live for. They, they, they're just not, you know, they're not a team that wants to win conference, just win conference. They've done that a billion times. They want to get back to state. I mean, that, you know, it's a whole different mentality. Having gone through that process so many times, even though these girls maybe not have been through it, 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 it uh, transfers from one uh, generation or one year to the next, you know, and so it's all part of what they all want to achieve, and, and they've been down that road before. All right. Well, I did have a chance to flag down both head coaches. When we come back, we'll hear from the visiting coach for the Amherst Falcons, Jay Pitts, on WDUX right after this. Go Indians! At Barber State Bank, we always jump at the chance to support our local athletes and outstanding area high school teams. Since 1911, Farmer State Bank has been in step with our local communities. Last year alone, we donated over $40,000 to local organizations and causes. You'll see our employees hopping to it, too, investing their time and talents right here at home for the benefit of others. Farmer State Bank in Wapaka, Wild Rose, and Fremont, investing in you. Equal housing under member FDIC. Grocery shopping is easy and convenient right in your own backyard. Amherst Family Foods carries the selection and savings you want. Their meat and produce departments are filled with the finest quality choices. Amherst Family Foods offers fresh baked breads and pastries for their in-store bakery. And on busy game days like these, their deli has a variety of hot entrees, including delicious roasted chicken, ready to take home and serve. Easy and convenient. Your hometown Amherst Family Foods. Proud to back the youth of Tomorrow River Schools. Old man winter has arrived, and surely he is busy plotting his annual dump of sleet, snow, and ice. That's why Favorite Implement is offering great deals and fantastic financing on snowblowers, front blades, and anything else you can use to get rid of the white stuff. So head into Favorite Implement, your John Deere dealer in Stevens Point and Westfield by February 28th to take advantage of this great time to buy. And you'll be ready for whatever winter throws at you this year. Amherst Telephone Company is proud to support the Amherst Falcons during this sports season. Amherst Telephone Company is equally pleased to offer the services and support for local communication. Amherst Telephone Company provides the Tomorrow Valley area with quality telephone service and the latest phone features, high-speed internet for online enjoyment, and exceptional digital TV services. When you want to stay connected to family, friends, and the latest news, get the service you need from the Amherst Telephone Company. Welcome back to the high school warm-up show on WDUX. We're now with Falcon head coach Jay Pitt. And, uh, Coach, keep us up to speed. The last we checked in with you was uh, against Iola Scandinavia uh, back earlier in the month. Since then, maybe a game that sticks out is wittenberg Burnhamwood. You're trying to stay a game up on them. You lost one 42-30. to Most of your players scored a single digits in that game. So take us back to uh, mid-February against wittenberg Burnhamwood. Yeah, that was a, a disappointing night. Now we uh, fell behind 12-2 to two in the first quarter. Shot about 23 percent so when you do that it, it makes it pretty difficult to get a win uh, but defensively we were good we kept them in the 40s which is a, always your goal going against Whitburn they're a high scoring team defensively we did alright offensively we just could not put the ball in the bat well you know the last game that we did cover though you guys showed that uh, although you've got an outstanding point guard and expect a lot from a Jamie Pitt you've got other players that have really stepped up including if I remember the last game we saw uh, was it the younger Ruts that stepped up and had quite a game? So that's got to be fun to see some of these other players that make you eight or nine deep on your team. Usually. Yeah, absolutely. And that over the last four games, that's what we've had. You know, Jamie's started to get a lot of defensive attention. You know, boxing ones and triangle and twos with two of the two on her, some goofy kind of thing. So, you know, we've had other kids step up. Hannah's been shooting the ball really well. Uh, Larissa Loken's been playing really tough on the inside. 
Jess Torrey and Lindsay have had some games for us too, so yeah, it's, it's nice to see. All right, well, hey, this is the uh, season finale. You've got a lot to play for. You're one game up on Whitford Burnham Road. They're going to be hosting Manawa tonight. So you've got the title to play for as we take a look at your Wyweger Fremont team. You and I were just discussing that although uh, they are a decent team at that 9-4 and four level, they sure have the uh, looks of a team that can be towards the top of this conference. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup for you here tonight, especially in Wyweger. No question. They're, they've uh, competed with everybody at the top and taken care of the other teams in the bottom four. So... And right there, these games can definitely go either way. It's always a challenge coming into this gym and playing them. Um, obviously, our goal is to walk out of here with just our names on the on the trophy. But um, you know, Whitmerk is, is a quality team too, and it, but the nice thing is we control how this plays out. So hopefully we can get things done. All right, the brackets are set, but we've got a lot of unfinished business tonight. Good luck. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Jay Pitt of the Amherst Falcons. When we come back, it's Joel Titus for the Indians on WDUX right after this. AgroPure, formerly Trigger Foods, which is good luck to the Y Wigger Fremont Indians. Here's hoping you'll come out on top like AgroPure. The cheddar and feta cheese made at Y Wigger's facility earned medals at the 2010 World Championship Cheese Contest and the 2011 United States Champion Cheese Contest. Y Wigger, the home of AgroPure, the gold standard in Wisconsin cheese making and proud supporter of Y Wigger Fremont Sports. Visit AgroPure's retail store just off Highway 41 at Little Shoot for award winning cheese right from the store. Faye Wilson, Realtor, Broker Associate, Remax Shamo and Lions. Thinking of buying or selling a home? I work diligently with both buyers and sellers of residential and waterfront properties. I would love the opportunity to work as your agent to close on your real estate vision. To buy or sell real estate in the Wapaka, Wywiga, Fremont, and Iola area, call Faye Wilson, nationally certified in short sales and foreclosures. 920-407-0003. Rebax Shambo and Lions. People often ask at the International Bank of Amherst, what's an independent bank? It's a bank where the decisions are made by people who live here, not by a nameless board living hundreds of miles away reading computer printouts and financial trends of larger cities. The International Bank of Amherst is a community bank owned and operated by people you know. Visit your local independent bank for all of your banking needs. The International Bank of Amherst, member FDIC, proud to support Amherst Sports. Welcome back to the warm-up show on WDOX. We're now with hometown coach for the Indians, Joel Titus. Coach, not very long time since we uh, met you against Manawa, and uh, you come up winning a next game, then you had a non-conference affair between then and now, so take us up to the moment between those two games. Uh, yeah, we had a, uh, a good non-conference game um, against uh, you know a solid Winnebago Lutheran team. Uh, I thought our defense played real well. We had uh, three quarters where we gave up. Uh, six points or less. Uh, I think we have a lot of patience um, on offense, and you know we we just made things difficult for uh, for the Vikings, and uh, we're able to come out on top. Now, a cursory look at your Manoa matchup would uh, tend to say, well, Manoa at three and ten now on the season. You know how much of a tough battle could that be? But I tell you what, we were very impressed with the pace of that game, the teamwork that your uh, players exhibited, but that was a pretty physical up and down game for a lot of energy expended for about three and a half quarters, so tell us how uh, again, kind of a repeat of how that Manoa game went for you. Sure, I think uh, you know our girls did a very good job of adapting to the kind of game that kind of played out. Uh, we, we put a lot of full court pressure, as you know, in that game and I think the girls, the one thing I think we could take away from that mostly is that we're in pretty good shape and uh, that we have the ability to, if we need to put that kind of pressure on, and if it's being, you know, if we're having success with it, we can do that um, physically if we have to. All right, well, things are coming together. You're now facing an Amherst team that you've seen once before. Maybe put into context for us your, uh, your previous meeting with them. You, we all know what kind of a team Amherst is, but maybe a comment on the steps that you've taken the last couple, three games and what you look forward to again tonight against Amherst. Uh, sure, I mean, I... You, all I have to do is look at the record, and uh, there's 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 a reason why they're 14 and one in conference. Um, you know, up and down on their roster, there's you know it's just solid basketball. Um, every every single one of those kids can play. Um, it's a very well coached team, a very disciplined team. Um, at the same time, I, I think that we've improved since the last time we played them, um, and I'm sure and I know that Jay's kids are, are better too. Uh, so I think we're gonna you know it's gonna take a, a real good effort on our part. 
uh, but I don't think uh, it's out of the realm of possibility for us to come out with a win. All right. And there's a reason why we're not talking about playoffs, because we will get a chance to talk about that when the time comes. Joel Titus, thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Thank you, John. All right. That's the coach of Wyoming at Fremont. And when we come back, John Wright and I will have the starting lineups and the tip. It's Amherst at Wyoming at Fremont on DUX right after this. On the court, on the ice, or in the stands, no matter where you are in the Theta Care service area, you're close to a Theta Care clinic and a team that can meet your health care needs. Theta Care physicians Wapaka and Riverside Medical Center proudly support our area's local high school programs in which all of the athletes good luck in their season. For more information on Theta Care physicians or Riverside Medical Center Wapaka, please visit thetacare.org. Fire on Ice, thanks to many fans, racers, volunteers, and sponsors have made the 2012 races yet another success. Despite the tough weather conditions, the crew was able to get the oval ready for the three TLR Cup races over the weekend, along with the many other races and events. Fire on Ice and y Wing has become a coveted stop along the central Wisconsin Triple Crown of Stumblebill Racing. Mark your calendars for next February 2013. Fire on Ice wishes the best success to y Wing and Fremont High School Sports, and go Indians! Can anything be more exciting than cheering on the Indians? Sure, Kate is IGA in Robigo. Okay, I might be a bit biased since my dad owns the store, but the quality meats and produce will have you doing somersaults. Katie's in-store bakery in Delhi will have you doing cartwheels, and weekly savings will have you doing backflips from the aisle. All that excitement is worthy of a cheer. How about, let's go all the way to Katie's IGA. Katie's IGA in Rodrigo, hometown proud. <laughs> John Wright, John Hammond back courtside, Justin Bowen, the engineer, back in the studio. We are moments away from tip-off. Time now for the starting lineup to the visiting Amherst. Lady Falcons in the regular season finale. 5'8", sophomore guard, a good one, Jamie Pitt. 5'7", sophomore guard, Brooke Krahulski. 5'9", junior center, Marissa Logan. 5'5", sophomore guard, Hannah Grayway. And 5'11", senior, she's the one underneath, Katie Rutt. Again, that is Pitt, Krahulski, Loken, Grayway, and Rutz. The Lady Falcons come in tonight 12-1, and one, top to the CWC 8 Conference, 16-5 and five overall, gunning for full possession of the conference title tonight. And as they turn out the lights and put up the spotlight, why we the Fremont Lady Indians will be led by Ellen Schrader, senior guard, 5'9", 5'8", junior guard, Mariah Holbert. 5'8", junior guard, Sydney DeSantis. 5'10", junior forward, Daniel Ostring. And 2'1", junior forward, Jenny Hellwig. And for Wyoming and Fremont, that's Schrader, Holbert, DeSantis, Ostring, and Hellwig. The Lady Indians come in 9-4 in the conference, 15-6 and six overall. And we will have them on the air next Tuesday night for their sub-regional matchup against Winnicottie. Again, they're coached by first-year head coach Joel Titus, Amherst by third-year coach Jay Pitt. And, John, we uh, expressed a lot of the keys of the game. Let's get a little recap before the tip-off here tonight. Why would the Fremont have to keep Amherst off the offensive glass? Amherst has shot over 100 more free throws than has Wyoming during the course of the year. They don't shoot them very well, but they get their all-time, and it stops the clock and it allows them to get into their press on made free throws. And so you want to keep them off the line. Both these teams, you have to hold the other team to one shot, and you have to stay out of foul trouble with your key players. And our starting lineups for tonight, we're brought to you by Katie's IGA and Wyoming, hometown crowd. Moments away from tip-off, it's Rutz and Helwig. Helwig tips it to her own for Wyoming and Fremont in their home white. But they cough it up right away off the hand of Ostring to the... Falcons, hip drive, gives to Rutz. Rutz pivots in the lane, up over high off the window, and she went right over Ellen Schrader, 5'9", senior, no small player in her own right. Falcons up 2 nothing. So here again, there's points off turnover, everything we've been looking at. And again, Indians cough it up in the forecourt. No, it wasn't. It was oh. just a poor shot uh, by Helwig that time. She was off balance. Good job by Jamie Pitt there trying to drive to the rim. So a one and done for the Indians. Falcons will control the perimeter in their visiting blue with white and black trim. They'll be heading in our direction as we're camped out towards the adult section corner. Shot is off the mark. No good for Grayway. Rebound to Elwig and the Indians. Falcons will back off the defensive pressure. 
Indians bring it in with Ostring working high on the key. If she gets it to Helwig, tries the right-handed sky hook shot. No good. Tough angle. Right baseline goes back to the Falcon. A second straight one and done for the Indians. Three possessions that have come up empty. And Russ on the inside over Helwig. And Katie Russ with her second consecutive bucket. Four nothing Amherst. And again, an errant pass. Uh, this time it goes too high into the paint and into the hands of the Falcons. Pitt brings it in. Fire Sugar Holsky who loses the handle. So they trade turnovers. Indians come up with it. Holbert will dribble up the right side, go into Helwig, low in the corner. She goes around Russ up and in. Nice. Right around Russ and underneath Loken and Helwig gets the first in her basket. There's the athleticism. She squares up at about eight feet and just goes right around the slower Amherst girls. But on the other side of the ledger, Russ is able to power her way through Helwig uh, down here for two easy layups. And here's the flex offense, and there's Russ right under the basket. She's got a little too deep. And the referee says all ball underneath and a tie-up on the rebound, and the possession arrow will look to go to the stay with the Falcons. And just as John said, pretty much strength versus athleticism and speed here is the showdown here in this matchup. Grahalski inbounds, but into the arms of an Indian, and that's all strength. Ostring to Hobart this time, coming up the left side. See if that gives a better angle. Two minutes into the first quarter, 4-2. to two. Falcons and Jamie Pitt comes up with another steal. She goes up the right sideline, weaves her way, waits for numbers, and she'll get fouled. A blocking foul looks to be against DeSantis. And, John, take a look at the Jamie Pitt numbers. 13 points, 4 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 4.3 steals per ball game. She yeah. averages half her way through a quadruple double every ball game. And, and probably more important than any of those that doesn't show up on staff, she gets into the defense and creates space for the other girl. Russ gets the inbounds and a very nice shot this time from the right baseline as she has all baskets for Amber, 6-2, to two, two and a half into the first quarter. She's too big and strong for uh, Hellwake to handle. And this time stepping into the passing lane as Loken gets a steal for Amherst. Pitt drives from 10 feet away. No, good off the window. Ellen Schrader with the rebound. Indians, they're coming back the other way as Mountains come back defensively. Helwig with some high dribbles. Goes into the paint and in. So Helwig takes kind of an awkward dribble, and she's able to contain it and go right into the paint. She's really athletic and fast that she's that left hand. It's really a battle between her and Russ. They both have an advantage over each other on the offensive end. Exactly. It'll be a battle of attrition. See who will be the last woman standing. Six to four as we approach the midway point of the quarter. Nice stop jump shot by Graholski. No good. One and done. Amherst goes back to the Indians. Bringing it in is DeSantis. She goes diagonally with it to Schrader to the right side. This time working around left. Helwig working high out of the perimeter. Skip pass across the back side. Up and in. Nice assist from Helwig to Ostring. And John, that is one combination we'll see a lot of tonight. Five foot ten, Danielle Ostring, no slouch herself. Yeah, and a great quickness over uh, size, and uh, there's Pip deep. And she breaks the tie with a three pointer, nine to six, off the hand of Jamie Pitt from beyond the arc. We said that she kind of lives and dies by the three sometimes. There she dialed one in. Graholski saves one defensively, preserves a turnover for the Falcons, and Pitt gets caught. Hardly, they turn it over. Yeah, she carries the ball. They call that a travel these days. Two in and two out for both teams. Both teams, again, will be deep. While we get Fremont easily six to seven legitimate starters, and uh, the Falcons will play nine deep. Nice breaking of the press for two passes. No bounces. They get the Helwig underneath. She finishes it off with her third bucket. That's a heck of an inbounds pass. That was half-court baseball pass, and then one pass to Helwig for the nice left-handed finish. The ball did not hit the floor until it went through the net. Nine to eight, Amherst. And into the ball game off the bench is Torrey, and just Torrey misses a long one. Helwig, the defensive rebound for the Indian. There's Macy Shinnick off the bench, outstanding guard, pretty much an assist leader. We saw her with seven assists against Manawa. Helwig gets pushed to the baseline, and a timeout, a bailout timeout for Coach Titus. We'll do the same. 3.38 to go, first quarter. It is Amherst, nine, Indians, eight. We're back on DUX after the 30-second Indian timeout. You know a good teammate when you see one. Hardworking, reliable, and most of all, someone who knows that success is best achieved when people work together. At Ministry Medical Group and Ministry St. Michael's Hospital, we work with all of our patients as a team to make the best decisions for their health. That's why we're proud to sponsor Amherst High School Falcon Sports, because the world needs more great teams. Get to know us better at ministryhealth.org. 
Ministry Healthcare. Today, tomorrow, together. Indians will regroup after the timeout under the Falcon basket with Holbert. Holbert pop pass into Helwig right off the inbound and in. Boy, there's an easy play to draw. Yeah, that's talking over Helwig. A little lob to the 6 1 Helwig, and she just has a little baby jump hook over the top. And it's really a battle to, to see the athleticism versus the bulk and strength of Amherst. 10 to 9, Indian advantage as we head downward in the first quarter time wise. Rahulski with enough fake. She goes off to the perimeter. A shot straight on for Grayway and in. Just inside the arc. And Hannah Grayway breaks the uh, basket. 11 to 10. The Falcons, they put on a press. And the Indians will nicely get their way cross court passing through the midstripe. Maggie connected to the ball game. And she takes it to Hubbard and puts in a three of her own. 14 to 11. Boy, both teams playing really well, shooting the ball really well. Uh, both run similar offense. Amherst runs a flex. Uh, Wyweega, the old, we call it the Wyweega offense, but it's kind of a swing, and it really puts your best players in position uh, to score, and it really helps the, the, the size and strength of Amherst running that flex. Rahulski gets blocked underneath and a foul on her defender, Maggie Connect, and Rahulski will head the line back to Hel- or Holbert's. Pardon me, let's scratch that. That would be, uh, where were we at here? <laughs> Uh, yes, Holbert, 32% from beyond the arc for the Indians, 84% from the line. But it's Grahulski for Andrews, missing the front ender. And that is uh, the team's second foul, incidentally, on Bailey Kapitsky. Two in and two out for the Indians. Helwig will rest. Yeah, she can't be out too long. She's stayed out of foul trouble thus far, but uh, I can't imagine uh, any of the other girls being able to hold off the size and strength of Amherst inside. Grahulski able to put the uh, second one in. 13-12. to 12. Indian advantage. Two and a half to go. Skip pass to Schrader backside. All the way down and out. No good. Grahulski rebound. And the Lady Falcons. Pitt brings it up the right side. Goes to her left hand. Dribble backs up between the wheels. She's got Shenick right in her hip pocket. Tries to pick up a high screen. Bouncing to the right side. And then she'll go back up top to Grahulski in the middle. Grahulski down to rough. Low left block. And I believe before it travel, they're going to wave something off as uh, maybe a foul. Yeah, uh, Jess Corey is very smart player. She really gets low on the block. And she's an easy target. She rips the ball through. Great free throw shooter, by the way. I think she only does one all year. So this is the depth of Amherst. Foul on Ellen Schrader, her first, the team's third. Amherst inbounds into the Indian basket. Get it to Lindsay Rutz, the younger Rutz. She has it high on the perimeter. He gets it tipped away by Connect, and Connect will hit it to Kapinski before falling down. Indians quickly in the offensive zone, and Shenick tried a baseball pass. Oh boy, but that was in the heavy traffic, and a blue jersey comes up with it. Lindsey Rutt. So, uh, no argument. Shenick is one of the best feeders in the business, but kind of an ill-advised pass, trying to force it through traffic there in the forecourt. Underneath to Russ, and Lindsay can't get it to drop and a foul on the rebound as helping her out with Margaret Eddy trying to get the rebound, and she climbs on an Indian, and we'll get a foul. Again, Amherst able to get it right on the block, right where they want it, and they just uh, bowl their way in, but uh, a good defense there without leaving their feet by Y. Wega Fremont, good challenge. Ostring in, and Maggie connects out. Nice turnover for her, a steal. As we're inside of 90 seconds to go, first quarter, one point, Indian advantage over Amherst. Working the perimeter right to left are the Indians, get it to the right corner. Baseline drive for DeSantis, sealed off. She skips past it across the paint. No good for Schrader. Rebound, Falcons. 68 seconds to go in the quarter. Pitt brings it up right into the forecourt. She'll go left side to Grayway. Grayway, though, chucked it away. Too long for Rust at the baseline. Back to the Indians with 101 to go in the quarter. Both teams turning the ball over pretty uh, pretty quickly here, but still a well-played game. Both teams going to their strengths. It's really a good job by both coaches. Good all around, except right there, almost a turnover, a jump ball underneath, and I believe that possession error will stay with the Indians, 52 to go under the Falcon basket. Good hustle by Schrader to get down on the ground and cause that tie-up, they keep possession of the game, or of the ball. 
I believe that's Kapitsky under the Falcon basket, looking still looking for the Indians, and she'll pop it way up high to DeSantis, right wing to Shenick, back to DeSantis, this time left wing, and they get a shot off, go off the mark, no good. That was for Connect, rebound Falcons, 40 seconds. J.B. Pitt brings it up right center with the right-handed dribble. She'll fire right corner. That looks to be Tory. And Tory goes right baseline, tries to go around Schrader, and the Schrader will get called with the foul, her second on the Indian senior guard. And Jess Tory will end the line for the Falcons. Jessica Tory on the season. Get this, John, 89.7% from the line. She was 9 of 10 in the last game. And I talked her right into a miss there. I can do it like the best of them. One in and out for both teams. Ellen Schrader sitting back in as Maggie Connect. And the Falcons also get a quick substitution in and out. Tory will dial in and in and out. A rare 0 for 2 for Jessica Tory, One of the best, if not the best, free throw shooter in the conference. Still 13-12. Indians get a long shot off, way off the mark. No good for DeSantis. Goes out of bounds, untouched. Falcons will get it back with 21 seconds to go. And both teams have court. cooled off here after a hot start, uh, but both teams have gone pretty far into their bench, too. And pretty gassed in the first eight minutes here. Bring yeah. it in as Grayway, uncontested. Left side, Graholski, 12 seconds. Up top, Eddie. Eddie goes right wing with a 9 seconds, 8 seconds. And Graholski gets swatted by Ostrig. Put a check next to a block shot for Danielle Ostring, and with six seconds to go, Falcons will inbound under the Indian basket. Jamie tip back in, and you can bet that this ball will come back to Jamie after she passes the ball in. She'll probably come off the weak side and come right around and get it. Covering her is Macy Sinek to get it out to the point. Three seconds, two seconds. Grahalski better shoot it. She passes it dead. Might have wanted to take the shot, but easier said than done. We end of the second quarter. 13 to 12, Indians over the Falcons. We're back courtside after this timeout. Hello? Honey, you you know that thing? Not the you know what. Yeah, the you know what's broken again. Oh, I hate that lousy. That, don't, don't say it. When furnace has become a dirty word, it's time for an American Standard Comfort System, a higher standard of comfort. Call your local independent American Standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Keep your home healthy and enjoy all the comforts of an American Standard heating and air conditioning system by contacting your local independent American Standard dealer. Shoemaker Heating and Tooling, a proud sponsor of Amherst Sports. Put your over-the-road skills to work for a trusted company. H.O. Wolding is looking for drivers to meet the needs of their growing company. H.O. Wolding is now hiring drivers. To learn more about benefits, routes, and the exciting opportunities as a driver for H.O. Wolding, call the recruiting department at 800-950-0054. That's 800-950-0054. H.O. Wolding has been a part of the Amherst community for over 70 years and is proud to cheer on the Falcons. Back to the League of Fremont High School, Central Wisconsin 8 regular season finale in girls basketball. And John Wright, I'm sure your numbers will show that it was a tale of two half quarters, both teams. Had a cooling off the Jets there in the last two or three minutes of that first quarter. Really a good game. Both teams going to their strengths. Amherst inside and a wide League of Fremont tail wing. Coach Joel Titus out on the floor, barking through his defensive squad as Amherst will control the possession to start the second pit with a straight on shot. Frack, no good. And momentarily, DeSantis had it, but loses it to Grayway, and Grayway loses it back to the Indians. So they exchange one turnover each. Elweg will dribble right into the paint up, and no good. Rebound is the older rut, the senior Katie. And the Falcons dodge a bullet there. Left side for Torrey, and Torrey skipped past as it was uh, hit off the knee of Ostring. And uh, should have got a trap. Yep. yep. Rut drove well, right into traffic, left her foot, and will travel turnover back over wow, to That was great team defense. She made the move left to enter, but somebody stepped in and took, uh, caused her to travel. Turnovers bounding up for both teams, six each. And I believe that was Brian Hobart, one of two that came in there. Helwig, again, a little out of control on the dribble, but she hauls it in, and a foul, I believe she may have charged. Yeah, I mean, she went over the top, uh, and that's the kind of foul she can't afford to have because she can't be in foul trouble. She feels like she was slapped, which may be the case, but uh, you can't let that bother you. She's attacking the rim, though, and that's great. That's what they're going to need to do to be successful. Team foul 
Ball number five for the Lady Indians, the first on Elway. Janie Rutt, eye on the right, and her pass across is zipped to Jamie Smith, and a jump ball is called as Coach Joel Titus, that happening right in front of him, wanted to see uh, travel on, but instead a jump ball. But the arrow will go back to the Indians. It'll cost them an arrow, but hey, they get the ball back with Hulbert inbounding right in front of the bench. That's a seven turnover for Amherst. They've actually had more turnovers than they've caused thus far, and that's not what they're used to doing. Tough place to play for them here at Wyliga, and it's showing through. A good draw for both teams here to end the season. Elwig in the left wing, way away from the basket. They'll skip it across, right side now, Ostring into Elwig. And nice pass underneath, but just couldn't handle it, connects. So they fire it back out, and a foul in the three melee. Seconds. Oop, and a three-second violation. A little awkward, as that should have been a shot off, but instead the ball yeah. hit outside the lane a little too long for the other. Connect Indians. didn't handle the great pass from Elwig, and then she got caught in the lane just a little too long. Why wake up here play? Really, really good defense. That's their operation, especially the last half of the season. And a nice shot for Marissa Logan as she was fed from up high. And that's the first basket of this quarter, 14-13 to 13 Amherst. And it came almost two minutes into the quarter. A drive for Hobart. Across the lane to Helwig. Comes up empty on the shot. No good. Rebound hits. Jamie comes up the right side. She hops and skips her way into the paint and gets fouled on a reach in. And uh, that will be on, I believe, DeSantis on the push. That'll be her first. Yeah, and that's what Jamie Pitt really, I think that's the thing she does best. Get into the defense, causes fouls, causes help to step up, and then she's able to make the dump down passes to the girls underneath the basket. And the second actually charged on DeSantis, the team's sixth. And a pickoff as the pass was intercepted in the low block by Ostring. Indians come up with it. Down by one and a chance to go up by one with a bucket. Hulbert in the corner. She'll dribble it out to Shenick. Shenick will pass it right wing to Ostring. Back up top, Shenick. No way. Kind of intercepted the pass from her old player. And coming up with this gray way who goes the distance. Too hard off the rim. Off the hand of a helping Jamie Pitt. And the Falcons wander a turnover opportunity there. And now that's a big one there because Helwig uh, laid the ball out there, did not see the defender, easily intercepted, but missed an uncontested layup. Uh, Helwig really good at cutting to the basket to get open. They need to be a little bit more patient looking for her. Shenick brings it in uncontested. She'll give it to Helwig high in the key, and then she'll give kind of a pick and roll there as Helwig still working high out with Katie on her like flypaper. Katie Rutz. Behind the right for Ostring. Gets it down baseline to Elwick. Tries to get her own rebound. Can't. Instead, Katie Rutz taps to Pitts. Five minutes to go, second quarter. 14 to 13 hammers. Katie Rutz. Nice skip pass to Jess. And Jess Torrey, though, a foul of the lane. Oh, I like it. Oh, and a turnover on the violation goes back to the Indians. Another empty possession for the Falcons. It's, it's been the defense is really causing problems there for for Amherst, and it's defense both ways right now. It's a defensive uh, battle right now. These are not unforced turnovers that these teams are having. They're just defending that well. Falcons respecting perhaps the backcourt ability of the Indians backing off. A three on the way for a oh, there's no good. Rebound ripped down by Jess Torrey. Tap to pitch. She'll bring it up left center. She'll shoot unassisted and buries it. Her second three on the night. A pair of threes. Six for her. Falcons up by four. Well, those are deep shots, and uh, Johnny, those are jump shots. <laughs> and a pass is uh, momentarily disrupted in the paint by Loken for Amherst, and it'll go out of bounds off of her. It'll stay with the Indians under the Falcon basket. Coach Jay Pitt getting a player in. That'll be the younger Lindsay Rutz. She'll come in for Jess Torrey. Strong player for strong player there. Yeah, well, Torrey comes off the bench, and it just fits right in, taking that spot of uh, Katie Russ when she needs a break, but uh, she's a real force in there, no question about it. But right now, uh, Jamie Pitt, you know, hitting the deep threes and breaking the team, uh, breaking the defense down on penetration is the difference in this game. Kapinski will give a rest to Ostring, 4-15 to go, second quarter, 17-13, to Falcon advantage, Indians with it, they work it all the way around the perimeter, right to left. And now back to the right. A.C. Shenick with a three. Oh, and now no good. Long rebound goes to Amherst. Loken. She'll tip to Pitt. And Pitt with four minutes to go in the second quarter brings it in to the fourth court. 
she'll pass it off and get her final on the baseline. And Strahovski has it in the right wing, gives it to Russ. Russ losing the handle. Helwig comes up with it. Mariah Holbert will bring it in. And a timeout. As Coach Joel Titus way out on the floor, as Coach Jay Pitt is talking to the referee. Well, I'll tell you right now, that ball, it, 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 that's not right. They can't just stop because they can't play. I love Jay, but he can't just stop them, everything. Oh, he's it's mentioning to the refs he wanted a timeout earlier and did not well, get it. Yeah, but they didn't give him a timeout. This isn't a timeout. He, I wonder, is this a technical possibility? No, he just stopped play. I don't know how you can possibly do that, and Coach Titus is uh, livid. Uh, you know, right now, Jay Pitt is defending himself with both officials. Incidentally, uh, Steve Kassler and Tim Marcourt, they are both in a pretty heavy discussion with Jay Pitt. He made the T signal with his hand while the referees were standing there. Uh, well, apparently gotta, wanting a timeout. Yeah, but they gotta, he's got to yell at I mean, you, they, the refs aren't always going to see him. But at least the refs are doing a nice job here of explaining that to Joel Titus. They're going to possibly resume play with an inbound as they will not grant a substitution or a timeout. Again, we are at 17-13. to 13. The Amherst Falcons, a couple of empty possessions. Joel's just wondering, why is he able to stop play like that when we have the ball? Right, no, the ball. Yep, no bucket. It was a turnover. Yeah. And uh, no whistle. So uh, very, very odd there. Not sure... What went on there? The last basket was scored probably about a minute ago. But anyway, it's the Indians' ball off of the stoppage. They work it to the paint. Helwig bounces it back out for a three. Is no good by Holbert. Rebound, Falcon. Amy Pitt brings it in right center. And she gets bumped by Macy Shenick on her way into the paint. Boy, I tell you what, a fun matchup as Macy Shenick is afraid of no one, but. You're trying to guard one of the best players in the conference. And you've got Jamie Pitt who can go both ways into the paint. It really causes problems. Shenick doing a nice job of sliding. They just called the bump, you know, because James Pitt is so darn aggressive taking that ball to the rim. You know, why we got just trying to hold on here to the to the halftime. They've gone stone cold. Elwood catching the ball a little too far out on the floor for my liking because she's so good slashing to the ball uh, on the interior and getting open. Margaret Eddy now into the ballgame for the Falcons, and at the line, J.D. Pitt is 63% on the season, just a little north of average for this team, and she does very both. It's what have you done for me lately? Right. Eight points for her. She gets there. That's the thing. You know, she shoots a lot of free throws for a guard, and, and that's why it's because of her dribble penetrating ability. Six points, Falcon lead off the eight free throws, and Mariah Holbert gets the feed in traffic. A tough basket for her underneath, gets it back to within four. She's not tall, but she's got, she's just got a solid build, and she can really post up in there. She's got really good footwork, so it's, she, they feel like she has an advantage. Jamie Pitt brings it in, goes right side to Lindsey Rutz, and they pop it out backside, and a long one on the way. No good for Graholski, and rebound. The putback, no good, and a second putback attempt by Lindsey Rutz. She gets hacked and will head to the line for two. Again, nice defensive effort by Wyweka Fremont, but it's going to cost them fouls as well as shots by a big blue at the line. Well, that's the first time we've seen multiple rebounds by Amherst. Uh, Wyweka Fremont doing a really nice job, and they're doing a nice job. Helwig is playing behind the post, but then they send help, and they're making uh, the girl Amherst girls pass out of the post, which they're good at, but it takes away Katie Ruck being able to just turn to the basket and score. And unfortunately for Macy Shenick, she was the one docked with her second, so it'll be her and Helwig sitting off of the substitution and two made free throws by Russ. Back in the ballgame, Hannah Grayway, starter for the Falcons. Well, I don't think why Wiga wants it to get any bigger than this going into halftime, and uh, they played a really good basketball game, but they have really gone cold. 21-15, to 15, Falcons and Albert Drains a cold-blooded three-pointer, her second. That is eight points for her, back to within three. That was huge. She's got a great shot from the perimeter, and she finally got one to fall for it. And a whistle on the Falcons. They will turn it over to the Indians with 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Indians a chance to really get this one back to deadlock before the half. You don't and see that very often. I can get girls basketball, the illegal screen. To me, it's just showing you're, you're being a very aggressive. Right. Coaches can live with that. That'll be on Margaret Eddy, her second player off the bench for the Falcons. 
as Dantas brings it in. Diagonal dribble, and the pass is tipped out. Attempted to the right corner. Kitty Sitton is so athletic. I, you know, she's in a great defensive stance, but she doesn't use her hands. I'd like to see her get her hands up and in the little fashion a little bit. She holds her hands flat down to her side. She's in a great stance. Use those hands. You've got, uh, you've got arms with hands connected to them. You may as well use them. Katie Rutt back in for the Falcons, as well as Helwig in for the Indians. And a shot is off the mark for the Indians. No good off the inbound, but Helwig gets hacked underneath. And she'll show how she can chuck it from the line for the Indians. It was a great pass out of that offensive rebound. I'm not sure who got that rebound. I think it may have been uh, uh, Holbert, possibly, underneath. No, I think she took the shot and cheered it. I think you're right. Yeah. Helwig just 46% from the line. But she drains that one right there. And that's the first free throw attempt of this first half by Wyweka Fremont. And I have made a note that Helwig doesn't shoot the free throw very well, but there she nailed the first one. Off is Kapitsky in as Maggie Connect. As Helwig from the line will line up for a second. And it goes in. A beautiful bounce off the right side rim just over two minutes to go. We're back to within a one point ball game. Full court pressure for the Indians. They come up with it. Get a shot off. No good off the rim by Ostring. And they still retain the possession with Maggie Connect. But it goes out of bounds. And uh, let's see. A good effort. By a great way to save it, but it'll stay with the Indians. Side out. I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, why we can put on the full court press on a made free throw, and with the 6 1 Hellway guarding the ball, it caused They'll an do immediate, that quite often. Yes. Was an immediate turnover. She will be the point of many presses, and we may see more of that in the second half. Inbound to DeSantis, inside of two minutes to go. Within one for the Indians. They work it to Hellway. Hellway almost loses the handle, but she drives it, dishes behind her, and a drive is. Popped up by DeSantis, ball on the floor, and it's retained by the Indians. Nice play on the floor there. Hellway baseline, trying to get it underneath to DeSantis. Instead, I believe that was Jennick picking it up, getting a shot off. No good, pardon me, that was Holbert. And a foul in the melee as the Indians are just out of control, trying to throw up shots, and it cost them a foul on the loose ball. Yeah, they needed to just settle down a little bit. Again, Helwig doing a nice job of driving, drawing the help, much like Jamie Pitt does from the top. But Helwig goes baseline, and she's good at finding uh, her teammates. But the teammates don't seem to be ready for the passes, and they're not handling them cleanly. Strahlski will take advantage of the bonus. And in and out on the one and one no good. Foul against Hobart, her first. Dodgeable up there, 21-20. to Indians still down by one. 123 to go. Ball gets tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Indians under the Falcon basket. Clock stops at 123. Inbounding will be Hobart. She's looking for Helwig, trying to get open. And instead, she'll fire it to the close right corner, get it right back. They fire it outside to Ostring. And on a backside pass, they get it to Helwig. Back out to the perimeter, and a three on the way for Hobart. Just a little long, no good. Rebound is a tie up. Goes out of bounds, and they're going to give it back to the Falcons with 111 to go. Say what? She's got a great look at shot from deep, though, over does. She needs to keep firing. They really move the ball past the ball very well. These are two good teams. Isn't this something? And now getting pitched in are the Falcons. Full court pressure, and they pop it up this court. Connect comes up with it, but she in turn fires it away, and I've been there. You just want to get rid of it. Got rid of it a little too soon. Intended for DeSantis goes back to the Falcons. 103 to go. They'll inbound in their own sideline. They're keeping this pressure on because it's really worked. Now, you don't want Elway to get that foul against Jamie Pitt. Ooh, and Pitt almost shuffled her feet in breaking the press. They get it across court to look back to Pitt for a long one. And it's an air ball. No good. Indians get it back under their basket. There you can hear it. And into the ball game will be Tory. Likely they're going to want to sit maybe Pitt eventually. Grahalski comes out, and for the Indians... They will substitute, not for Helwig, but instead, if Kapinski comes in for DeSantis. No pressure by the Falcons. Indians down still by one. Getting it into the four quarters, Kapinski. Cross court to Holbert. Holbert dribble drives. Dishes, and a three on the other side is in and out for Kapinski. No good. Rebound, Rutz. The senior Rutz. Rammers. She'll tap to Pitt. 33 seconds. Try to play for one. Up 21 to 20. Hit with a mock drive, but she'll dribble it right back, high on the left. She'll take to her right, go to her left, and the ball is booted momentarily, but picked up by Greenway to get the shot off. She gets fouled and will head to the line for a couple. Again, what I like about uh, Helwig, 
Tommy Jr., but she's really a communicator out there. You can hear her hollering for help and, and we're telling where people were to step in, doing a great job. They're really closing off the driving lanes for Jamie Pitt for the most part. The first on Kapitsky. And the first free throw is beautifully squished by Hannah Grayway, 22 to 20. In will be Ellen Schrader. She will rest, connect. Again, this bench outstanding. Really, you can interchange probably seven or even eight players. My weight starters. is cheaper than I thought they were, uh, Johnny. They're both, uh, both teams are very good. Grayway comes up short on the back ender, but the Falcons get the rebound. Up side two, a chance to drill it further before the locker room. And a three on the way. Good. From Jamie Pitts and Anna Grayway. This is a free throw, but this is a free. Five seconds for the Indians down by five. Hellwig, right baseline. One last shot off the side of the backboard. No good. And we'll end at halftime. What a nice little spurt for the Falcons to get a little cushion before heading to the locker room. It is 25 to 20 advantage of Lady Falcons. ABC News, look at your Wisconsin weather forecast. And when John and I come back, we'll set up the second half of the season finale. It is Lady Falcons 25, Lady Indians 20. We're back courtside after halftime programming, which starts right now.